Good evening, everybody. This is Darius Asemi with uh, uh, GV Wire and Granville Homes. Welcome to another episode of Unfiltered. Um, we just recently moved studios, uh, so we had a two-week uh, kind of hiatus. Uh, along with my co-host, Steve Brandout, Supervisor, um, Fresno County. Welcome, Steve. Good evening. Darius. And also with Mike Rabasi, uh, Council Member, City of Fresno. Good evening, Mike. Uh, and we have a great panel for you this evening. Uh, Sheriff Margaret Mims uh, is with Hi. us. Good evening, Sheriff. Hi. Uh, Captain Don Gross, Fresno Police Department. Uh, good, evening. good evening, Captain. Dr. Hank Guterres, Deputy Superintendent of Educational Services Office of Fresno County Superintendent of Schools. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Dr. Guterres. And then Marcelino Valdez, who is the either current or the past president of the Bullard High School Parent Teacher Association. Um, current. Think, current. Yeah. Got a cur current president of uh, Bullard High School. And Norm Anderson, deputy superintendent for Clovis Unified School District. Good evening. Good evening and welcome everybody. Uh, so we're going to talk about campus safety um, and what are the steps that we should, the, our school district should be taking and then uh, in the second half of the program, we're going to roll into uh, the recent um, decision by Bullard High School on banning cell phones uh, at Bullard High School starting uh, next week or two. And Marcelino can uh, discuss that um, uh, uh, with us uh, in, in a few minutes. But before we get into this exciting stuff, we're mm -hmm. going to take a quick break and do a brief uh, news minute update on the latest happenings uh, around the valley uh, for a brief 60 seconds. Coming to you from the GVWire studio, here are some of the trending stories that are making a local impact. Former Fresno area Congressman TJ so Cox was arrested on, on Tuesday Facebook by the Live FBI, right culminating no, in a years long but... investigation. The US Department of Justice is charging Cox with 28 fraud related counts. The Fresno City Council is scheduled to vote Thursday to provide a $1 million grant to a local Planned Parenthood clinic. A spokesperson for Mayor Jerry Dyer says the mayor intends to veto the funding if it reaches his desk. Bullard High School's new campus cell phone ban is not up for debate, Fresno Unified says. School officials are scheduled to meet with parents on Thursday evening, but the media and general public are prohibited to attend. Back to you, Darius. Okay, uh, thank you for that. We had a little audio mishap on that. Uh, we didn't know that we were live actually. So anyhow, let me start with the uh, Sheriff Mams. Sheriff, tell us about uh, a, a uh, what do you see happening in public safety at school districts? Um, any update on that? For a while, they were gonna get rid of cops on campus. Then they decided to bring back cops on campus and parents had a lot of issue with that. And uh, have you had any threats of any shootings on campus? School just started this week uh, and the Fresno Unified opened, I believe. Uh, most schools have opened either this week or they're going to next week. Uh, any update on campus safety and what should schools be looking at to beef up support for students, faculty, staff? Thank you, Darius. Well, first of all, you know, violence on school grounds have has been happening for over a hundred years. What's different about now is they're happening more frequently with more injuries, more deaths, uh, and more news about it. The, me the media has really changed how we get information. We, we hear about this uh, so much more often. Uh, I wanna talk about, first of all, when Columbine happened, law enforcement really changed the way they were doing business. And we trained ever since Columbine to when we respond to an active killer, we engage. Um, why that did not happen at Uvalde, I don't know all of the details yet, but that's how we're trained at, at the Fresno County Sheriff's Office. We have several agencies attend our advanced officer training and that's how they're trained to respond as well. One other thing that we've done is we've made sure that we've got as many school schematics at our fingertips in our computers, in our cars, uh, so most of those that we have, oh, we have about 360 school sites, excluding the city of Fresno and Clovis. 
where we're able to get on a computer, see the school site, so that when we start an approach, we get a call, a location is identified, we can look at those plans as we're getting there in our cars to know where to go. Uh, I want to tout our relationship with um, Fresno County uh, Schools and, and Dr. Gutierrez. We have been working for years together on this issue, and we have really developed over time some really good ideas about what we're taking to our schools. So for instance, not only do we train our law enforcement officers, uh, several years ago, we started a program called Seconds to Survive, where we will go to schools, businesses, churches, doctor's offices, uh, and train people on what to do to save lives before law enforcement gets there. Because so many times by the time law enforcement gets there, it's over. Uh, so what we started doing is giving people ideas about look around. It's all based on run, hide, fight. Run if you can, hide if you have to, and fight if you must. And when we practice things when we start teaching this. We've, we've trained thousands of people in our communities about what to do when this happens. And many times people in those classes will come up with their own ideas about how to protect themselves and their students. So it's really a two-prong approach. Not only do we train law enforcement to respond and engage, but also we are training organizations and schools and churches on what they can do to save lives in the minutes it takes law enforcement to get there. So kudos to uh, Dr. Gutierrez, uh, Jim Yovino, um, also helped so much getting this started. And we, to give an example, we had a threat of a possible shooting that was going to happen at, uh, in fact, it was at Central Unified. This made the news. Uh, the good thing is the students were trained. They had been talked to, it had been discussed about what to do. The student told administration, the administration called us. We were able to identify the student, um, get him and detain him make the appointment with the parents and we we found that there were weapons in the home but we we stopped that when i say we we did it together it wasn't just law enforcement it was students schools and law enforcement together and those relationships are golden thank you sheriff um any recent threats uh against any of our schools that you have heard that we, we in the media or the average public has not been made aware of we haven't had anything recently, and, and for the sheriff's office, the schools that we are in, we have not had the controversy of defending police. Uh, that has not happened in the schools that, that we serve. Uh, so, and we haven't had any recent uh, threats of any kind of violence. Got it, thank you. Let me go to Dr. Gutierrez. Um, tell, tell, tell us what Fresno County, um, you know, superintendent, uh office is doing to keep our schools safe uh and and preventing you know attacks like such as happened at uvalde or any other really shooting at, on on campus yeah, th thank you darius so so one of the main initiatives that we've had um, here at the fresno county superintendent schools and in, in, um, through uh, jim yovino's leadership is is um professional development series known as behavioral threat assessment trainings. So what we do is, uh, Sheriff Mims alluded to, is what we do is we bring um, community partners together, um, school superintendents, site-based principals, uh, Fresno Police Department, Fresno Sheriff's Department, school psychologists that are deployed in all of our uh, 32 districts um, and all of our schools um, to convene and uh, learn the latest cutting edge strategies on creating, number one, creating a behavioral threat assessment team uh, mm -hmm. on your campus or within your district. And then number two, uh, going through real life scenarios on how we may treat uh, uh, behavioral indicators. Um, and so for example, if there is a uh, incident, as you see on the flow chart on the screen, if there's an incident or a concern, we we, along with the behavioral threat assessment team that's assembled in that district or for that particular school site, um, uh, we, we convene, we, um, we make sure that different protocols are, are in place, 
Um, that could be just between the administrator and the counselor and a school resource officer, for example. So we put a plan together, an intervention plan or a supervision, supervision plan with recommendations. But if that uh, threat or if that uh, concern uh, is uh, determined that a, a level two assessment mm -hmm. is needed, then that goes into where we do a collaboration with our community. And that could involve, you know, the mental health services that could involve um, uh, the juvenile justice services that could involve school psychologists at a deeper level. And so there, those interventions and supervision plans um, are more related to how we can uh, leverage community partnerships. Um, so October, uh, just in a couple months, on October 17th through the 19th, uh, our office is holding a three-day school safety symposium. Um, GV Wire, Darius, you're welcome to attend. Um, where that, at that symposium, day one is going to be to uh, a refresher course, as Margaret Mims Ranger. alluded to. And solutions for We're gonna have, uh, uh, trainings from the Fresno Police Department that is going to involve a refresher course on Seconds to Survive. We're going to have a refresher course uh, for um, the uh, what to look for with, with local gangs and gang activity. And then we're going to go into uh, the last two days of the trainings, October 18th and 19th, will be for all 32 districts, faith-based schools, charter schools, to send uh, their uh, school representatives, dis district representatives, okay. to to convene their behavioral threat assessment teams. Could you repeat the date again and the location, please, Dr. Gutierrez? Yes, October seventeenth through October nineteenth, and that will be at the Double Tree here in downtown Fresno. Got it. Thank you. Let me go to uh, Captain Gross now, uh, Fresno Police Department. Uh, tell us about your involvement at Fresno Unified or any other campuses. Uh, what, what, what do you guys provide and what do you see in terms of campus safety? Schools just started back up. I know Fresno Unified started this week. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> kind of fill us in on what you, what your role is and, uh, what you see, what other additional steps we need to take to keep our students and staff and, and faculty safe. You know, I just like to echo what the sheriff said. Um, obviously our officers, um, Columbine was 1999. I was a school resource officer sergeant in charge of that unit the year after. And Columbine did change the complexion of how law enforcement officers respond. Um, and as a result of that, I think that um, we have all, our entire agency certainly has been trained. Uh, every time a new officer comes onto our agency, we go through active shooter training. Some of the philosophies have changed, but it's all the same. It's immediate engagement. Um, but let's just be honest. And I, I'm sure Sheriff Mims will echo me with this. Once a round is fired on a campus, we've all lost. Uh, because then that campus is perceived as not being safe. Parents are scared, students are scared, teachers are scared. The biggest value we have in law enforcement, whether it's the sheriff's department, whether it's the police department, is making those relationships and having those officers on campus. Those officers are the cornerstone of community policing. We heard a lot in the past couple of years of the importance of community policing. And community policing is just that. It's having officers, whether it's in a neighborhood or whether it's on a campus, building those relationships. Those relationships are what allow us to do those early threat assessments. When students are coming to us saying, hey, this is a situation where we don't feel safe and this is why. It's because of those that we can do those interventions. We can get there before a threat hits social media before a threat becomes a reality. And so we do tons of follow-up on that every day. That's what our school resource officers, part of their job. And the same with the sheriff's department, the, the, the officers and deputies that are on campus are making those relationships. Sure, it puts an officer there immediately to respond uh, if something does occur, but more importantly, it gives us those, uh, those abilities um, to have our, our, our fingers, our feelers out and, and get something, get more information than we would have otherwise. Just responding after it happens. Um, yeah, we're good at that. But unfortunately, again, it's too late when that occurs. So I'm going to actually bring in uh, Marcelino Valdez right now to talk about uh, from a parent's perspective, you know, what do you see in, in school uh, safety? What, 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 are, what threats do you see? What challenges do you, uh, do you face as a president of the 
uh, Parent Teacher Association at, at Bullard um, and, and, a, and a business owner. Can I tell us that and, and your personal experience. Let's kind of briefly dive into that. And then, and then I want to ask you about what's happening at uh, Bullard High School. Sure. I think with uh, the recent events that happened at Uvalde, I think uh, public safety is top of mind for all parents. I mean, I myself, I worry about my own children. Um, you know, the situation that happened at Uvalde, I mean, hits all parents and non-parents alike. I mean, you, you just feel for the kids uh, in that situation. And you, you have to ask, could this happen uh, in our own schools? And I have elementary kids that uh, one of them did ask me, he said, dad, could this have happened in our school? And I couldn't lie to him. I said, you know, it's possible, but I pray to God, son, that it never happens at your school. And I have the utmost faith in our law enforcement, uh, both the sheriff and the police department. I think we have the best of the best here in our city. So I'm confident that they would have no hesitation going in and protecting. But uh, just as uh, you know, Sergeant Gross said, I mean, if a bullet is fired, it, we've already lost. And so it does uh, ruin the image of a school being safe. And uh, my kids are in the Bullard District. And uh, earlier you asked if there are recent incidents. And in, in January of 2020, there was a, uh, there was a threat. Uh, it, was, it was found to not be a true threat. Uh, but there was a threat on social media that a kid was going to go to the school and shoot it up. And uh, Fres and Bullard went on lockdown. And, uh, you know, as a parent, um, my heart stopped when my son, uh, who at the time was a freshman, he texted me and just said, Dad, there's a shooter on campus. I just want to tell you, I love you. Please tell mom and my brothers that I love them. Uh, you know, I hope nothing happens. And I'll tell you, I, 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 I right at the time I worked on uh, knees and palm, which is about a couple miles from the campus. I jumped in my car and I took almost every red light to get there as a parent. You don't know what to do, but you know, you got to do something. Uh, fortunately, by the time I got there, the place was surrounded with cops and uh, tragedy was averted. But one of the biggest concerns I have is the aftermath of what I have. My son told me that as a school lockdown, his teacher was over what was going on in the hallway. And to me, I was extremely concerned. And I called on the principal to find out, you know, what was going on, what kind of protocols were being uh, followed that a teacher would open the door and risk uh, students' lives just to find out what's going on. And so again, tragedy was averted, but uh, it, it's a big concern. And you know, after that, I met with the administration there, and I learned that there are multiple threats that have happened um, at Bullard High School. And I was not aware of the amount of threats that uh, in the past couple of years have happened uh, during uh, just before COVID lockdown. Uh, our campus is not adequately fenced, and it is a big target for anyone that just wants to hop over our fence. I mean, I don't think that fence is three feet high. That is probably the most penetrated, penetratable school in Fresno, bar none. All other schools have the tall fences that uh, make it a little more difficult. They have single point entries. Bullard is the one school that uh, I don't know why. Uh, I've been told there are political reasons why we cannot get a fence that is similar to that of uh, the Fresno High, of uh, the other schools in the district, Sunnyside. Uh, all the other schools, they all have Edison, the tall fences with a single point of entry uh, to protect our kids. And so to me, the recent announcement of the phones uh, is a big concern. Safety is a concern, and I don't think the timing is right to implement the policy. I don't know if you want to go into that now or if uh, you want to save that for later, Darius. No, why don't you, uh, you know, you're, you're, in a, you're in a great role, Marcelino. Tell us about the upcoming meetings Thursday night that is not open to the public or the media and um, what that means what what is Buller High School trying to achieve do parents uh, support it uh, kind of give us a little bit of a background and then we want to get the uh, get Officer Gross back on to comment sure so I first found out about the uh, 
the phones, uh, I think they're called yonder uh, little pouches from a parent, uh, you know, I'm the Bullard PTA president currently. And I found out from members that were concerned and asked me if I had seen uh, this announcement and they sent me screenshots and I was really uh, blindsided by it. I had no idea. And I really did think, well, you know, I would wish that uh, the current principal uh, would have reached out. That's what the Bullard PTSA is for. It's a parent teacher student association in which you know, you can talk and collaborate on ideas such as these, and parents could have voiced up their concern, and maybe they could have crafted a better way of implementing and rolling this out, but the pouches, to my understanding, we're, we're having a meeting Thursday to discuss the details, but it's going to be rolled out in September, and basically all students are required to lock up their phone uh, when they get to campus, and there's a magnetic uh, unlocking device that'll unlock it uh, before the day's end. Uh, the concern that a lot of parents have is just public safety. Bullard has had a history of uh, public safety concerns and uh, not to mention some other incidents that uh, some parents feel will uh, deprive them of a voice. And so I think the timing is bad. And I think that uh, Bullard is not ready for a full rollout of a program like this. I do think uh, as a parent, uh, none of us want our kids on the phone all day, but I do believe that uh, if there is an issue, then you, you address it on a case by case. If you have enough of these pouches, why not roll out a system where if the student is bec becoming a uh, disruption, you give them one last warning. If they don't listen, you lock it up. That's a great uh, progressive, uh, you know, I guess, discipline to enforce the policy that you want to have these kids paying attention. Uh, a lot of parents that I talk to, most parents that I talk to are very concerned. Public safety is top of mind for them. Being able to communicate with their kid, not being able to uh, reach them for an incident like this is a big concern. <clears throat> now, there are some parents that are supportive, and I think that uh, some of them are referencing uh, some studies that have shown that uh, student learning has increased. And you know, for the past few days, I've been reading these studies, and to me, there, it's not a significant difference of 6% when the 6% that have increased per, or improved performance were the bottom tier performers. So if you have someone getting a 60%, uh, you know, on test 6%, I mean, that's going to be 3.6% better. So you're still going to be a 63.6. So that's not really solving the issue. If you really want to tackle poor test performance, there's better ways to do it than to enforce a policy like this that is just a blanket way of taking away the, uh, the rights that our kids do have. And I think it's teaching the wrong uh, principles of freedom and personal responsibility. And I, as a parent and part of the PTSA, I think that uh, we need to voice our concerns. And again, yeah. I, I want to support <laughs> Principal Tarigian. I think he has great ideas, but I think the timing of this rollout uh, and the approach of how this is going to be rolled out is it, just not right, uh, and it's it's not something we should have right away. I'm gonna. Those are some great comments. I'm gonna come back to you in a minute, <clears throat> but I'm gonna read um, a couple of comments on our Facebook live feed from Tanus Fam. They said the kids can communicate through Microsoft Teams, and then also. Uh, uh, that is also a distraction. As a Buller parent, I don't support this initiative. There was no communication. Many of us parents think it's to cover up the issues taking place on campus. What, is, what does that mean, Marcelino? Well, this past spring, there was an incident where there was a kid that um, in the weight room, um, what, I'm fine, what I heard was <clears throat> the kid was playing ninjas. They put some sleeves, they cut off their sleeves. They were putting them on and one kid pulled it up and it looked like uh, what would be the uh, KKK hat. And they okay. snapped the picture, posted it, it circulated. And so a lot of the African-American community and a lot of our members that are African-American did reach out to me and, and asked, you know, hey, this is a big concern. What, what is the PTA doing? Um, and I don't think, in, in my opinion, I don't think, I don't think Bullard, uh, there, there is racism. Um, I, is there... Isolated incidents, of course, they're everywhere. I mean, you, you can find that any part of the city, and I don't think it's unique to Bullard. Um, in this situation, I don't believe the, the incident was race motivated, but 
it's the perception. And so Got some it. parents are concerned that now their voice and ability to document these kinds of incidents will be silenced. And, and it is, uh, I think it's a valid concern. Is it a brief question uh, and I, for you to give us a brief answer, then I'm gonna go to the Captain Gross. Uh, is Bullard the only high school uh, or is Fresno Unified using Bullard as the first high school and then rolling on to other campuses? Do you know that? The district is not enroll, enforcing it. They're not asking Bullard to do it. Bullard volunteered. Principal Tarigian volunteered the school. Do you know the reason behind that? I believe at Tanaya, he had rolled out something similar. And so he was trying to bring this over to Bullard as well. And, and right. I talked to Bob. Uh, Bob yeah. told me himself that, you know, he tries to support his leadership team and he's doing what he can to support uh, Principal Terigian. He's not really taking one side or another, but he is showing support for Terigian and trying to improve test scores. There's a lot of comments on Facebook Live uh, coming in. Cam Malloy had another uh, comment, uh, had, a, had a comment agreeing with you, Marcelino, about your suggestion is perfect. It should only be used as a last resort if student has been using their phones when they were not supposed to be uh, and are not following the rules. Let me, uh, before we go to Mike uh, Karbasi, uh, Captain Gross, do you have any uh, comments on uh, school safety and cell phone bans? You know, I, I think it's important to listen to both parents and certainly Fresno Unified is an outstanding partner for us. They're, they have asked us to be on campus. So they're very concerned about student safety. I mean, all of us have children, minds grown but went through this, the public school system. And we all wanna keep our children safe. And I think the value of a, of a society like ours here in the United States is that we can have an open discussion on this. I'm not sure of the reasoning for that, but I, I think that uh, what Mr. Valdez is saying is completely valid. That can be discussed by parents and the school administration, uh, and they can come to a solution. But what are you trying to achieve and what is that balance against? Um, my biggest concern, obviously, based on the uniform that I'm wearing, is the safety for all students. And I think you could argue both ways that safety could be improved um, one way or the other. And I'm certainly not here to do that. Um, but I do know that it's the open communication, again, with schools and parents that give us the ability to intercede in those things. And so, you know, we're going to support that open communication as much as possible. I'm going to, be, again, before we go to Mike, thank you, Captain Gross. I'm going to ask Norm Anderson, is Clovis Unified uh, have a ban on cell phones for students? Um, no, we don't. We, we, we do not want them out during the class unless the teacher is using them as a tool. And um, some teachers will have uh, almost the old uh, calculator pocket charts where the students will sometimes put their phones in there when they first come in, um, but they have access to them. But um, no, we currently do not uh, do not have that in place. What about this? You know, you see, you've heard you've heard in the media <clears throat> that uh, students use the cell phones to cheat and communicate answers to test questions. Is that I, I I think our job. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Darius. No, that's it. Does that happen? Yeah. Do you guys? You know. Um, yes. How do you does avoid it, that? Does it, does it happen with children, adults? Uh, yes, uh, it definitely does. It's it's a tool. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, part of the education system is to um, teach students how to use technology in the appropriate fashion. And, um, and I think that's, that's really our job um, is to teach them how to use it in, a, in an appropriate way to uh, learn as a tool or to communicate as a tool. And we also have to show them the inappropriate ways um, that it's utilized and can create issues for us at the school sites as well. Got it. Uh, Mike, you had a comment or a question? I think you pretty much hit it. I was going to ask Marcelino, and again, I, I really appreciate you being on Marcelino. We have tried for years to get Fresno Unified and the superintendent to come on our show. We have a lot of people that come on our show from all walks of life. They continually refuse. This lack of transparency is something I can't understand. Um, but let me just put it this way. Um, I was going to ask, you know, a cell phone is a modern piece of technology. And, mm -hmm. and like, for example, when you go to work in the real world, uh, there's not going to be a pouch for you to put your phone in. This is something that I've had to learn. I didn't grow up with cell phones in high school. I've had to learn there are times, stop looking at your iWatch, stop looking at your phone, because it's really rude and unprofessional. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that we could be teaching kids. Now, I'm not a teacher. I can't imagine how frustrating it is because you're continually having to remind your kids their students pay attention, but 
there are underlying are there underlying other issues like respect for your teachers we should be talking about professionalism we should be talking about because how is this going to solve the overall problem Marcelino what are your thoughts on that that's a great question and I think uh, my coworker and I we were discussing this and we we said you know parents most parents that are going to be supportive of their kids and the teachers if they're told their kid is being a distraction or they're cheating you know they're going to look at it as a learning opportunity which is what you're implying there it's a learning opportunity to coach them uh, to talk to them about okay th this is what you did this is what it means this is how it's going to impact you as you grow older those are teachable moments and i think when you deprive the kids of these opportunities to learn I mean, what's going to happen when they do go out in the real world and they're out there and, you know, no one's taking their phone away from them. Um, again, I'm not saying teachers are responsible for teaching these things. I think parents, number one, it starts at home. But if there is an issue, I can tell you that my kid's been in high school now four years. I've never heard from a teacher. Your, your son is using a cell phone as a distraction. It's becoming too much. So to me, it tells me, I mean, Maybe he is using it, but it hasn't become a point where they're notifying me. But those are things that I think that if there is an issue, let's address them on a case by case uh, situation. Let me jump in real quick. A uh, couple of comments uh, uh, on Facebook Live. Tanus fam, he says uh, they, they can still cheat through teams. Trust me, I've heard stories from the kids, uh, end quote. Um, and, and by the way, st uh, students can bring in two cell phones, right? Put one in the pocket. Yeah, they call them burner phone. But, burner phones. <laughs> but even I, back in high school, I mean, there are so many creative ways, Darius. If I wanted to cheat, I've seen so many memes and so many TikToks. There are soda pop labels that you can put on your soda that has all the answers to the tests <laughs> and the formulas and everything. You could put it just about on anything to make it look legit. So if a person wants to cheat, they'll find a way to cheat. So got if, it. You know, if, if they're thinking this is going to eliminate cheating, I don't think it is. Darius, and, and I want to I want to chime in. I'm sorry, because this is a fundamental issue because everything, no matter what level of office you're in, it goes back to our kids and our schools and our future. So their solution to stop cheating is to stop this. That's not the issue. It's not the use of a cell phone. It's the fact that people feel like it's OK to cheat and there's no consequences. I mean, at least maybe I'm I'm, I'm that guy yeah. now where I'm old and I say, oh, those kids. When I was younger, if you got caught cheating, you would get suspended or probably expelled. I mean, it was a death nail to your record in your future. There was but, fear. But um, um, and some, some great debates going on Facebook Live. Uh, a lot of some folks are saying, hey, believe me, I cheated before cell phones were, or technology <laughs> was there. And then, uh, Steve, you want to repeat your comment on Facebook? At, at Fresno Unified. If they're all cheating, why are they still all failing? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know it sounds bad, but I mean, that's what we're seeing in Fresno Unified. And we're kind of focused on Fresno Unified tonight because Bullard High is there and the cell phone ban is there. Um, but, you know, something needs to be done. I, I tend to overall agree with Mike. I don't have kids and I don't have kids in Bullard and I don't have kids in Fresno Unified. And I, I don't really have a a dog in the fight about the cell phone issue. I, in many ways, I can see both sides. You know, take the cell phones away, they're a distraction, but yet they provide a level of security and safety, contacting the parents like in Marcelino's example. Uh, the only issue that I have so far is that, is that the, the conversation has not included the parents, right? And so you're not gonna get much success in anything if you're not including everybody who has skin in the game, like the parents of Bullard High students. So, you know, um, our, my understanding was originally this was set for discussion to be implemented in January. You know, that gives the parents a lot of time to get their heads around it, maybe tweak it. Marcelino said possibly even improve the policy if you have input from other people. But it seems like they're rushing forward. That's the part I don't get. They're going to implement it the, like in the first couple of weeks of school. I don't get any of that. I don't get why they would not include the parents and you know, kind of bring them into the conversation. Some great comments. Uh, Inga Schlegel just put a comment. Is there research that proves this new policy brings up test scores? I think Marcelino talked about that briefly. There's some uh, 
research, but it's, you know, in some cases brings us, uh, their test score up or their achievement scores up 6%. And that's only at the bottom uh, performer. So it goes from really 60% to 63.6%. And this was a 2015 study in the UK. So it hasn't even been proven as a model in the US. More importantly, the only school district that ever, large school district that ever did this was <laughs> the city of New York. They did it for 10 years and found that it was a horrible mistake and they eliminated it. So that has to tell you something that this does not work. And I just want to make a, one comment real quick on what uh, Supervisor Brandau said. You know, I was having a conversation with uh, Susan Wittrup. She's running for school board in this area. And when I was venting to her about, you know, what was going on, you know, I, she made the point what Steve was saying is that, hey, you know, the parents should have been involved is, is basically what she said. She asked me, were the parents involved in this discussion? And I think that is where the biggest issue is. Us as parents were not included in this conversation. And, you know, I, like her, I agree that perhaps this might be a good idea in, in forced to if, if there are kids that are an issue. But, you know, without parent input, th this is a wrong way of doing things. And I have to agree with her 100 percent. So uh, before we go to Mike, uh, Susan Wittrup did put a comment on here and and she's written actually uh, or did a video about this. Parents need a voice about this policy. Locked bags will not stop cheating. <laughs> That's a really good point. So um, it's really the whole point, I think uh, Susan Wittrup's point, your point, Marcelino, and I think that's what Steve said, um, is that parents should be consulted before you roll out a policy like this, instead of just kind of sneaking it through last minute. Um, and really, teachers should be uh, consulted as well. Parents and teachers, these are the folks that are going to implement this program and then work or work with this program. Work, they're, they're responsible for our kids, edu our students' education. So the, the fact that they did not kind of is really surprising. And they're, they made out a statement, uh, well, I guess it was yesterday, Bullard High School, they're doubling down and say, we, this thing is going to get rolled out. Mm -hmm. um, so no, no, no parent, no teacher has chimed in yet that, that I know. I know, Inga, there's a lot of folks, uh, teachers that, and, and parents. Well, we have the president of the PTA here, Marcelino about this, uh, talking about the issues there, but with, with parents not being included. And then there is another comment that says, please include parents in this decision-making process. Uh, these are our kids. Those are some really, really great comments. Um, um, Cam Malloy, I think this, this all is ridiculous. It should be about responsibility. Teachers need to hold students responsible to follow the rules. Parents need to hold their ch children responsible. Anyhow, lots of lots of great comments on Facebook. Can I ask right? a quick question to Officer Gross? And, but really quick, and then, then we've got to go to Mike. I just want to know if, uh, in his opinion, is there merit to having students have cell phones in, in today's day? Is there a benefit to you in law enforcement for these kids to have these phones and be able to communicate real time what's going on in their classroom, in the hallway, where they're at, if they're in the bathroom? Is there some merit to having the kids have access to these phones? Of course, having any kind of information in a critical incident is always uh, important. And I think the, the important question here is not whether or not it has merit, it obviously does, but what is the, the cost benefit? And uh, obviously I'm not, I'm not really familiar with why this policy came about or what the purpose for it was, but I think you've got to weigh that against um, what is the value of, of, of having it in an emergency situation. And if you want to be completely fair and honest, you got to say, if there are bad people, do they gain something by having the ability to communicate, right? So um, I am old enough uh, to have been around uh, in law enforcement before cell phones were widely used. Certainly officers didn't have them. We didn't have smartphones for certain. Um, so there, you know, there, there were, uh, we, we policed before that. And we will continue to police through this. I think the most important thing, though, is, uh, again, as you, we've all discussed, is that dialogue takes place between the school district, the parents, the people who are most uh, invested there. And then we as law enforcement will do our best to, given whatever circumstances that um, 
are determined, we will do our best to keep that that uh, community safe. Okay, so, I'm gonna. I'm going to thank, thank you. you, Captain Gross. I'm going to go to uh, Sheriff Bims before um, Mike. Sheriff, do you believe parents and teacher, teachers should have been or should be consulted before a cell phone ban goes into effect? And you're on mute, Sheriff. The, in law enforcement, there's a saying um, that talks about if you can predict it, you can prevent it. Uh, and when you have a major decision like that with something as sensitive as cell phones, you tell a teenager that you're going to take their phone away. I mean, that's kind of a punishment. You, you, that's, that's bad. And I, I, when I hear all of this going on, I think, you know, making a decision about cell phones and not letting students have them in the classroom, you could probably predict this was going to be cause some turmoil. Uh, and when you can predict something like that, you can prevent it by engaging students and teachers and parents. And that didn't happen, it sounds like. And uh, that's that's too bad. But I, I really think when something you, you look at, and to me, when I hear this, I think, boy, somebody should have known at the beginning this is going to be cause a lot of controversy. What do we need to do to get people involved and engaged? And I think that's important in any decision you make that's going to be controversial because you might be able to prevent the turmoil um, in the future. That's a, that's a, those are excellent comments from such a wise sheriff uh, that has tried to keep Fresno County safe with limited resources that, that you've had over the years, Sheriff. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Darius, can I add to that? Sure, please. Dr. Gutierrez. Yeah, so the, so the irony of what uh, Sheriff Mims just alluded to with regards to cell phones is that what we know uh, in looking at uh, school violence is, is number one, we know that school violence is preventable. The irony with cell phones is that what, what students and uh, staff are able to do with the information that they have on cell phones. And what I mean by that is if you, I don't know the statistics right up off the top of my head, but Sheriff Mims or uh, uh, Captain Gross can, can uh, chime in, is that uh, what we've learned with school shootings is that uh, social media posts by the aggressor more often than not is out there. It is public knowledge if you have the right social media venues and you're following that person, if you know that person. So that's the, that's the irony of cell phones is when it comes to relationships, when we have police officers on campuses, uh, students might be more willing to share that information. It's out there. Uh, we've learned, especially with Uvalde, we've learned that the, that the aggressor had, I think, multiple different posts, or you would call warning signs, uh, to, to the violence. Um, and so uh, school resource officers, for example, they could be you know, your first line of defense on a campus if the right relationships with the students are in place. I'll give you an example. Uh, Officer Gross and I worked on this together. At Bernie Elementary in Fresno Unified, we started a program called Pivot. Uh, it's a program for sixth graders. It is a program that speaks to um, school violence. It speaks to self-efficacy. It speaks to positive relationships with officers. We actually have a Fresno police officer um, who goes on to the uh, Bernie campus once a week and teaches lessons for, I believe it is a nine week uh, unit. Uh, Darius, these kids at Bernie Elementary love, I mean, they love this police officer on their campus. She has created the best example of police student relationships you could ever dream about. And our initiative here at the Fresno County Office of Education is to scale that out. Um, we have scaled it out now to Kerman Unified, and we're gonna scale it out to Washington Union, uh, and, and we have it in Fresno at one school. Th this, is th this is where the whole nexus with, you know, you wanna call, call it what you want with regards to, you know, banning cell phones. Um, but I would argue that it is what we do with the information we see on social media where, where uh, we can prevent right. school violence. Great point. So do you, and also, do you agree with Sheriff Mims 
that the teachers and parents should be consulted before a cell phone ban is rolled out? I would agree with that, that in the fact that any, uh, any form of site leadership, uh, especially culturally responsive leadership, uh, you, you first line of defense is, is working with your community. Uh, you have to involve your community. They may not agree with your decision, but they would be involved. I think that's what uh, in some, some of the comments on Facebook are also that, that kind of uh, follow that same line of thinking. Uh, again, I think Susan Wittrup has uh, done a video on this and is, uh, is in, it's smack in the middle of this issue, making sure parents are consulted and teachers are both consulted uh, before a, a consequential uh, decision like this or policy like this is rolled out. Uh, Mike, you had a comment? Let's get to you and then we're going to do uh, closing statements. Yeah, I know we have to wrap up now before I comment. Um, I, I did a little fun activity, which we were at the very beginning. I was asking for any if anyone has any good police jokes and the sheriff had one. If she wants to share that right now, that'd be great. Because kids may be watching. You can share it with your kids. It's a good one. You're muted, sheriff. I'll pass on that so we can get some some more uh, pertinent comments on that. It was a good joke. But okay. Subject. <laughs> okay um Darius can I add one more thing please go ahead Dr. Gutierrez and then Mike yeah so Jim Yovino here our, our superintendent um we contracted about two years ago this was pre-pandemic uh we contracted with uh, our local um technology agency uh, Bitwise uh in about a month and a half maybe even less than that uh Jim is going to roll out a uh, an app that will be on uh, accessible for iPhones and Androids. This app is uh, going to allow all students from Fresno County to navigate, starting in sixth grade, to navigate uh, a college-going experience. They will be able to log on to this app and look at the necessary tools they need, starting in sixth grade, to access college. One of the features of this app, incidentally, Darius, one of the features of this app is for any student and any parent can send a private email to their school uh, head counselor. Um, and that tool would be allow the student to say, for example, if there's a threat on campus and they can do that anonymously. That was an added feature that we just added to that uh, app um, at the very last uh, networking comment. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a funny, um, you know, ideology or a funny paradox that we're talking about cell phones, but you know, kids need a chance to be able to send a message. And again, the feature wasn't created to send an anonymous message for violence or school violence, but it is on the app where a kid can feel safe, a student can feel safe but to send a message. All kids except Bullard High School students. Right. <laughs> right. You know, Darius, but, that's, a, that, that, that's such an important tool. You know, I, I just, I think that if Steve and I, as elected officials, ever tried to just, especially given the parts of the city and county we represent, ever tried to hammer something down people's throats at, uh, through through our, our offices, we would be hit really hard on that. Sometimes you you have, I mean, you have to be transparent. Sometimes you have to do the work to build support. Like for example, when, when this debate came forward, I learned a lot of things I didn't know before. Like if you have diabetes, for example, you have to be able to use your phone to check your levels if you have one of those uh, meters that goes on your arm. Um, and now they're talking about making an exception for that. Um, this, th this program where you can anonymously or contact your counselor so they're aware because you may, you know, the sheriff mentioned training for the students, which is so important, but being able to identify the signs of someone who is troubled and may commit a terrible crime. But I feel like Bullard has just been set up so badly for failure. Like I went to Bullard for a year. My brother graduated from there. Uh, a lot of family have gone to Bullard. And I just, I don't, I don't get what's going on. You know, we had all this good problem identification four years ago and you can't even get a fence around Bullard. Uh, I just, it just, it's, it's silly. And like, I, I know we have four candidates running and elections have consequences, but I think that uh, we've got to go in a different direction because you can say all the right things, but if you can't get things done, um, Steve, I, I mean, I can't speak for Steve, but someone like me, I want a partner I can work with so I don't have to worry about this stuff. But I'm worried about about Bullard right now. It's just it's one thing after another with this school. And um, Armin Tarigian is a great principal, great principal over at Tanaya. 
It's not his fault at all. I think he's doing a great job. But, you know, the word trustee has the word trust in it. Where the heck is the trust for the community and the, getting the parents involved? I don't know. But I think we need to go in a different direction. Great points, Mike. There's several comments about the, what Marcelino brought up about the fence at Bullard. That <clears throat> Bullard is not, uh, is not a necessarily safe campus. It's accessible. And then we're going to take the cell phones away. And what Dr. Gutierrez talked about, an app that actually Fresno County Office of Education is rolling out. Well, Bullard students won't be able to take advantage of that if they have their cell phones confiscated. Uh, I think with that, we're going to get into, um, I'm just trying to think if there's any other questions or co important comments on our Facebook page. Um, you know, and one of the points uh, from Inga, one of our regular um, uh, followers of Unfiltered, it seems like cell phone issues should be able to be addressed in the classrooms with consequences for non-compliance. Non um, Natalie Turner, uh, some of these folks are singled out with a disability because they have a cell phone, not inclusive. A lot, a lot of incredible comments there. The, the cost of the policy, I think, uh, to roll out is about 35000 And part of my issue with this is uh, it's not, gone in front, not going in front of the board to, to the point that Mike just made. City of Fresno were to roll out an important uh, policy without public di dialogue. Uh, I think they would, they, our council members would be in, in deep trouble. And I think part of the law that allows this cell phone ban requires uh, the, the publicly elected board of trustees to actually debate this publicly before they roll it out. Um, with that, uh, if there's no other comments, we're going to go to our final closing comments. And let's start with uh, Norm Anderson and then to Captain Gross. Thank you, Darius. I, I'll just say these are two complicated subjects uh, in one 60-minute uh, uh, period. And, and uh, um, But back to school safety, I, I just want to say thank you. Our relationships with Fresno Police Department and Chief Balderrama and, and uh, Captain Gross, and we've met with Sheriff Mims before and uh, in Clovis, um, Chief Fleming, uh, have really helped us process um, what we do with school safety on our campus. We actually have 16 sworn officers with average of 22 years of experience. And I can't agree with Captain Gross more. Um, the, the area community, um, the old beat cop in the neighborhood um, is the best relationship building we can do with our officers. But we have 43,000 students, which means about 86,000 eyes. Um, we have another six, you know, thousand plus in, employees, which is another 12,000 eyes of people that those relationships are the ones that are gonna tell us if we have issues. This week, we're spending um, um, training all of our school sites on active intruder training, which we did um, four years ago with the assistance of Clovis PD and Fresno PD's input. And, um, and we're doing all of that. And we're also rolling out a new uh, communication system because we realize the sooner the officers have told us, the sooner that everybody is notified of an emergency, the sooner it can, we can get people to, to react and to either run, hide, or fight, as, as uh, Sheriff Mims has said. So uh, this could be a whole other conversation, but we appreciate you having us. Thank you, Norm. Uh, let's go to Captain Gross. You know, I think the most important thing to remember is that the most valuable people in our society are our children. And it is our society's responsibility to protect them. Um, you know, so the entire uh, philosophy of law enforcement was built around Peel's principles that uh, were established in the early 1800s. And the basic principle is that we are paid to do what every citizen should be doing. Um, so the idea that we all have a responsibility in the safety of our children is paramount. When bad things happen, as Sheriff Mims has said, we will be the ones that stand in between that. That is our role and we, we will do that. But let's, if we can prevent those things from occurring, that is so much more valuable than worrying about the tactical response and what kind of weapons and what kind of things we're gonna do. Um, we've lost if it gets that far. So um, I couldn't agree with Mr. Anderson more. Um, the more that we do as a community to prevent this, to intercede with this, even if it's just to help a child who's having a bad day that could later on have other problems, um, that, that's the critical thing here. Thank you, Captain. Dr. Gutierrez? 
Yeah, the, the thing that I would end with is just get to know your kids. You know, the best advice I can give to school administrators, especially brand new school administrators, is get to know your kids, uh, get to know um, what they like, what they don't like, get to know um, their families, get to know their tendencies, uh, you know, go out of your way to make those positive relationships with kids, you know, uh, get to know their mom, get, you know, because what happens in those positive relationships and the building of those positive relationships is, believe it or not, we can prevent school violence. Why? Because when, when, a, when a child is um, not themselves, you know when they're not themselves. When a child is, is, uh, is acting a, a way where they are not normally, you would not know that unless you have those positive relationships with those kids. I mean, that goes for the classroom teachers uh, in, in this scenario. So we know that school violence is preventable. Thank you, Dr. Gutierrez. Uh, Sheriff Mims, and then we'll go to Marcelino. Uh, again, I, I want to talk about the, the relationships that everybody else has, has talked about. It's so important. And when there's times of trouble, that's not the time to have those relationships. You need to start it right now and make sure that, that you have those um, working relationships. Uh, I want to give our website uh, out to the people watching. It's fresnosheriff.org. So www.fresnosheriff.org, O-R-G. Uh, there is a video on there called Run, Hide, Fight. And you can show this in your organizations. And it's a very short video, but it hits the high spots about what to do, uh, what you can do, when there is something actively going on in your location. So it, it just go to the Sheriff's Office website and you can find it there. Also, you will find information on Seconds to Survive. We developed this with law enforcement throughout Fresno County so that we could be pretty consistent in what we uh, taught people because uh, school people move around. When you might be a teacher in one location, you might move and go to another location, but you, you see the same presentation. So it's pretty standard. And we make sure that it's not only the teachers that we show it to, it might be the maintenance person uh, that is able to make a difference. It, it might be the cafeteria lady that makes the difference. So everybody in the school needs to have this and see that presentation. So thank you for highlighting this very important issue tonight, Darius. Thank you, Sheriff. Thanks, Sheriff, for, for joining us. Uh, Marcelino. Sure. So I'll close with uh, the the main concern I have over this uh, cell phone ban uh, is the three P's: uh, public safety, parent involvement, and perception. Public safety is a big concern after Uvalde and uh, other school mass school shootings. Uh, parents' concerns should not be just uh, dismissed. Uh, parent involvement is paramount here. You, you must have parents involved if you're going to roll out such a strict policy. And if you want buy-in from parents, you have to include them and, and invite them to the table for a discussion. And perception. Uh, with perception out there that Bullard has been, uh, you know, just doing these different things that uh, have caused some concern about uh, race and cover-ups, I think this is a wrong time to enforce some sort of policy like this. And so I do urge all parents to show up Thursday. Uh, anyone that's listening today, Thursday is your opportunity to voice up at Bullard High after uh, it's at uh, 5 p.m., I believe. Uh, this is your opportunity to come out to the school, voice your concerns. Uh, I, I know Principal Tarigian's a very reasonable person. Perhaps if he hears from enough parents, uh, maybe they'll roll this out a little bit different. So I, again, I urge everyone to go this Thursday to Bullard High School for the uh, information session they're having. Great, thank you, Marcelino. Let's go to Steve. So Darius, I came on tonight. I didn't have a real strong opinion. I can understand why people, teachers, um, coaches would love to have the cell phones out of their lives so that they could instruct more directly and maybe get some better results. I can... I can certainly understand that argument. I also get um, why parents like Marcelino would love to stay connected with their children in case of any type of emergency. And then there's a whole host of other things like how to schedule doctor's appointments or mom, I forgot my homework. Well, there's all kinds of needs for these things. So, but, so my takeaway tonight 
mostly came from our Facebook live viewing audience, which was soundly against this policy. And it was mostly because it did not include a conversation with the parents. They might be, um, they might come around in the end. We don't know, but right now they're upset that parents were not involved in the conversation. And, and most of our guests uh, talked about that tonight as part of their answer. So I guess Darius in wrapping up, after being down for two weeks, it's great to come back with a, a whole panel of experts, uh, Sheriff Mims, it's always great to see you, Sheriff. And uh, also uh, um, Police Captain Don Gross and uh, Dr. Gutierrez and Norm Anderson and Marcelino Valdez. So it's great to have a full panel on tonight. Darius, we get to talk about a lot of other issues coming up. I wanted to give a quick update. I'm having a fantastic night because in the state of Wyoming, incumbent Liz Cheney has got 30% of the vote and her challenger is at 65% of the vote. So that's fantastic. Uh, it made my night. So thanks a lot. Uh, good seeing everybody on Unfiltered. Okay, Mike. Uh, well, Steve, this is one day you can't criticize the FBI because of the TJ Cox thing. Got to be happy with them now. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I want to thank this amazing panel. Uh, you know, we had a lot of great heavy hitters tonight. Thank you, Sheriff. I know you're very busy. Thank you for being here um, to talk about safety in our schools. That's, that's a fundamentally important thing. I did not realize the number of schools we have countywide, not including the city of Clovis and Fresno. It's, it's just shocking to me. And uh, they do, a, the Sheriff's Department does a great job of managing their resources uh, for, for that. I just, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, so thank you so much everyone for everyone for what you're doing. Uh, this is a pretty hot button issue. I think in general, the fact that it came as a surprise to so many parents in this environment um, is a pretty big deal. And I hope that tomorrow night, uh, a lot of questions are answered and that they can uh, take th whatever... Thursday, a Thursday night. Thur excuse me, Thursday. Thank you, Darius. Thursday night. And whatever they're planning on doing, they can incorporate the feedback of the parents of the, F of the Fresno County Office of Education, of our law enforcement to create a better program. So again, thank you so much all for being here. Uh, I look forward to hearing how this is going to develop. Uh, the the for me as a Northwest Fresno council member, the state of affairs for our middle schools, our elementary schools and our high schools in the district, which include Bullard High School, it makes a big difference on where we're headed. And um, I, I hope that we're gonna start heading in a better direction. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I'm going to wrap up uh, my comments. I should uh, wrap this up with my comments. And I'm going to read uh, Justin Magdaleno's comment that just, just went up. There's nothing that can be said that would make me be okay with my kid's potential lifeline being taken away. It's a narrow-minded idea. Um, so anyhow, there's uh, lots and lots of comments. Uh, this is a, we know it's a controversial issue. Um, and my, that means my, uh, my two cents on this is in these United States, consequential decisions that impact the quality of life of our citizens, our parents, and our students should not be made behind closed doors and, and slammed through. The idea may have merit. They may It may be good reasons why to do it, but it may be sometimes where it actually is needed to do it. But when a school, and one high school only, in the entire Fresno Unified District decides to roll this out without parent involvement, without parent feedback, without teacher input, and honestly, without, without uh, students, get the student body involved and go, how do we do this thing so that we can actually en enhance educational outcomes of our kids while keeping our campus as safe and connection between parents and kids fluid without disrupting the classroom? Let's come up with a great solution I've uh, realized over over my over the years, uh, when a policy comes down without feedback from the end user, that's what I call dictatorship. <laughs> that's what I call authorita authoritarian rule. We need feedback from the end user. If you want to be successful, if I want to be successful in my company, on the Granville Home side, I got to get feedback from my customers on the services that I'm offering, the product I'm, I'm offering, et cetera. And in this case, Bullard did not consult with parents, not that I know of. And according to Marcelino Valdez, the president of the Parent Teacher Association, 
parents were not consulted. It may be, the idea may have some merit, but without parent involvement, parent feedback and teacher involvement, and honestly, without a policy like this to go to the board and let, let there be a debate at the board of directors, I'm, I'm sorry, the, 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 the board of trustees. And those are the things that concern me. And, um, and my question is what really, why is uh, Bullard being singled out? Uh, so with that, we're gonna end this uh, program. On behalf of all of us at GVR, I wanna thank our, our uh, guests for being here tonight. Sheriff Mims, thank you for your great words of wisdom. Uh, Dr. Gutierrez, Marcelino, Captain Gross, and of course, Norm, uh, Norm Anderson. From all of us at GVR, have a great week. Uh, the event again on Thursday, uh, not available to the public. You have to be a parent or a guardian. Uh, the media is not allowed in, in either, uh, but it's at Bullard, actually Mar Marcelino, it's at Bullard High School at 5 p.m. Is that correct? my understanding i can uh, send you more information so you can maybe put on your website as well it, it will be on gvwire.com uh, tomorrow morning we'll have the exact location um sure. and more details for everybody uh and gvwire will cover can be inside when the debate is as being as being had uh we're going to be maybe outside. they'll confiscate our phones too <laughs> they're going to probably con yeah <laughs> it will, it will, it will, here's a question will any parents live stream that on their facebook page I'm gonna take a Kodak and just take pictures. <laughs> okay. Oh, are you serious? They're gonna take. Are they taking your? Board no, board? I'm joking. I'm okay. joking. No. Okay. <laughs> all right. On behalf of all of us, have a great week, uh, and stay tuned to gbwire.com for a lot of great information on on campus safety, uh, back to school, and also on uh, the cell phone ban that's being rolled out at Bullard High School. Thank you, everybody, and have a great evening.